Yep. There we go. Hi, everyone. Um, <laughs> so, outside interior, interior. Um, just to brief introduction, I'm situated in the School of Architecture and Design, and actually I work in the building that, um, <laughs> that Terry, Terry showed. And uh, yeah, I think it's a wonderful building, actually. Um, I also supervise creative practice um, research candidates, PhD candidates, and um, have a role across the School of Architecture and Design in terms of learning and teaching, where we have a very strong um, kind of culture of uh, design studio pedagogy. And I guess I just wanted to say that, just by way of introducing um, just you know, my talk and its focus really on, on artistic research or what we would call creative practice research and research is something that happens, happens through doing. And um, just so that you're not totally suspended, this is a, the only image I'm going to show as well. <laughs> I've been really, um, yeah, just wondering whether to, I've got a movie and, you know, Paul, you know, Jill's sort of loaded it up. But, you know, I'm just, uh, I guess, I'm just, um, yeah, working out how to visualise what I'm speaking about. And it's, it's very difficult. Um, and, and it's good that it's a problem, but um, yeah, I just think I'd just rather talk today rather than show anything. So Deleuze and interior design may seem like an unlikely coupling, especially with Deleuze's dismissal of interior and interiority, and he even ref makes a reference to a hatred of interiority. And design is also a target. He, you know, Deleuze and Guattari speak about the shameful moment when it, along with other disciplines of communication, seized hold of the word concept itself, you know, and turning concepts into products. So I'm sort of very, um, I understand how that happens and, uh, you know, also catch myself out trying to do that quite often. I'm in a book called Deleuze and Design um, from EU Press, e EU, EU Pub Press? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just where we've got Carol in the audience, um, um, by Betty Marenko and Jamie Brassett. Um, they say, well, sorry, you know, uh, Deleuze and Guattari are not the point. Even though they might have a criticism about design, really it's not about them. But rather it is about creating new milieus um, from their concepts um, as distinct from engaging with their thought in place. And I think this really is sort of within the spirit too of um, Deleuze, <coughs> when he writes, we learn nothing from those who say, do as I do. Our only teachers are, tho are those who tell us to do with me and are able to admit signs to be developed into heterogeneity rather than propose gestures for us to reproduce. And I think, um, you know, just very much for me in terms of my practice, I mean, it's this engagement with Deleuze in this kind of way. And indeed, the book that we're launching is called Practicing with Deleuze. And it's this practicing with rather than um, practice, you know, like a, a sense of about or um, on. And I think that links through also in terms of artistic research, which is research um, through as distinct from about. So Marenko and Brassett also talk about this idea of um, a very interesting kind of proposition around sort of the relationship between design and philosophy and how both are kind of very much concerned with um, uh, possible uh, the future and intervening in current issues and concerns and sort of materialising the not yet now. I mean, often design is referred to as being um, an agent of change. And um, I think uh, picking up on some of the discussion earlier, I mean, it's quite interesting too, um, thinking about the word problem and the nature of problems within design. And design's often seen to be problem solving, but it's also um, very much about problem finding as well. And um, the other interesting thing that um, Marenko and Brasset make the point of is just talking about um, design as process rather than a thing. But they also distinguish it from architecture. And I guess that's just where I've sort of my, my practice is more, has been more really situ sort of situated in a discussion with architecture, art, craft, and also design. But interior design as a practice is kind of more sort of situated or has, my practice has been than say in relationship to product or industrial design. And specifically with exhibition design, 
and curatorial practice is a practice of arrangement and selection. And I also see teaching very much as a practice, and I think maybe it picks up on some of the mm. comments that you made as well. And maybe that's one reason why I don't have images um, currently at the moment, because I think that a lot of my work most recently has been, been around the area of pedagogy and thinking about um, Deleuze in relationship to that. But anyway, just as a student, um, I was reading Deleuze, and then I came into the study, interior design, I guess bringing Deleuze with me into uh, interior design, I immediately became quite aware of the dominance of phenomenology in hearing in the discipline like a natural self-given. I mean, that was um, 20 years ago and it still is the case. And I think it's because there's an emphasis on spatial experience um, and this is why um, there's a phenomenological position. But there's also a particular sense of nostalgia and coupled with the assertion of intimate and individual. And I guess I just sort of have found um, that position in terms of practice as solipsistic and um, uh, very quite difficult then also for students to, to be teaching students as how to sort of imagine that they might practice when um, experience is defined by the experience of the individual and as though it's sort of in some hermeneutic bubble. So there is an inside-out subject-centric position that inheres in the discipline. And um, it's just interior is a term that's is kind of like a natural self-given. Uh, it's also uh, interesting picking up on the last paper as well, keynote just around dogma images and interior as enclosure and interior as space as an a priori condition are dogma images in the discipline. And the relation with exterior is dialectical, it's either or. So there's a lot of value, I think, in terms of sort of, um, well, I found a lot of value in terms of reading Deleuze um, in relationship to these, to these um, dogma images, for example. There's a liberating quality in the critique of cliches and opinions and an invitation to practice. So in terms of interior design then, um, you know, he becomes kind of a provocation. And just, just to quote um, from Deleuze, something that I, I take through with me um, into thinking about these issues is, um, and I'll quote, the struggle of a modern subjectivity passes through resistance to the two present forms of subjection. The one consisting of individualizing ourselves on the basis of the constraints of power the other of attracting each individual to a known and recognised identity, fixed once and for all. The struggle for subjectivity presents itself, therefore, as the right to difference, variation and metamorphosis. And I suppose if, if, you know, in terms of thinking about my practice as an interior designer, it is to sort of um, work with this right to difference, variation and metamorphosis. So for, Delo for me, um, Deleuze, you know, to pick up on... Um, his reference to a pair of glasses directed to the outside. Um, this is just in, this is an important kind of way of thinking about how to work practice with him, um, and it's not just in terms of sort of um, his reference uh, this idea of an outside as a foreign language and a thinking otherwise, but also the idea of being directed to an outside as distinct from a focus on interior. And as someone practicing and wearing these glasses, the outside becomes vitalized in relationship to the production of interior, <coughs> inside interiority, and in a way which is not determined by the bioelectrical or binary relations of interior exterior. So there's an invitation to practice to clear the cliches and assumptions regarding interior and interiority. And just another nice quote that um, is, I think it's um, yeah, from Deleuze, not Deleuze and Guattari, it's, and this invitation to practice is to lodge yourself on a stratum, experiment with the opportunities it offers, Find an advantageous place on it, find potential movements of deterritorialization, possible lines of flight, experience them, produce flow conjunctions here and there, try out continuums of intensity segment by segment, have a, new small, have a small plot of new land at all times. I guess it's this idea of a small plot of new land at all times is sort of for me what the project um, of design is. So I guess in terms of um, 
uh, questions and posing questions and opening up this question of interior. Um, one has to be, or I learnt, um, that one has to be quite careful with posing questions. And I, I sort of, Deleuze's response to a question on the subject is useful here because he refused to respond to the invitation to answer this question. He said, it's um, never very interesting to criticise a concept. It's better to construct new functions and discover new fields that make the concept useless or inadequate. And perhaps this is a situation with interior that Deleuze would champion, you know, to make interior as a concept useless or inadequate. Um, but also in his writings, it's quite interesting that interior is mentioned, um, the words interior in and interiority, in his constant but boundless notes, Deleuze combines a radical critique of interiority with a stubborn search for an inside that lies deeper than any internal world. And since, hence the hook um, for me. So the question, if one poses what is an interior, it seeks an answer of identification. But it's quite, when, when you situate um, this question of interior and design, it becomes a question of how, a question of how interior, and where and when and why. So, you know, this question mark interior, and so picking up a stealing from Deleuze's question mark hyphen being, which he invented to interrupt the dialectical relation and hence negative implication between being and non-being, and refunctioned being as a problematic. I guess, you know, in my pickup, I lost the hyphen between the question mark and interior, and it might have been an oversight due to my focus on the question mark um, in an attempt to shift from a what question to something else, um, and which directs one to define and answer in a categorical and universal way. However, um, I think what, what's interesting, and it comes back to my introduction about sort of, you know, working with or practicing with is distinct from an application of, and um, so without the hyphen, it, it's, it produces a pause and repo. The idea is the question mark interior is to produce a pause for people just not to sort of go into the assumption of interior, um, but just to, to, to pause and stumble and repose it as a problematic for and in practice. Um, and it's not a concept, it's not a product for interior design practice, but rather it's empty in relation to any substantive meaning. But it does function and produce a pause, a crack, a zone of indeterminacy. As Brian Masumi writes of a crack, um, there's open in habit. A zone of indeterminacy is glimpsed in the hyphen between stimulus and response. So in a sense, this question mark interior is like a whole hyphen. But thought in becoming is, this is just to continue the quote from Masumi, thought in becoming is less a willful act than an undoing, the non-act of suspending establishing established stimulus response circuits to create a zone where chance and change may intervene. So posing interior question mark interior in current practice affects the pause between stimulus and response, suspends the binary either or relation, and produces a gap where contingency, chance and variation may enter. So it's posed as a problematic as distinct from a problem. It's not in search of an answer, so much as a creative problematic that finds its vitality in practices where interior and interior interiority inhere. So for example, um, just the practice of an interior designer is defined by the discipline's <coughs> professional body, the International Federation of Interior Architects Interior Designers. And they say that the identity of this profession is to determine the relationship of people to spaces based on psychological and physical parameters to improve the quality of life. So here the relation is between existing subjects and objects in space with outcomes determined in advance, improvement and quality. So, um, you know, an example of the dogma image. Particularly at the moment, this idea of well-being is something that's very much um, prevalent throughout the discipline. So this is um, just to, this is a relation to um, hmm. So it's a relation to, and I guess what I do in my practice is to move, and with exhibition practice and so on, is to move from thinking of objects and subjects in space. And um, Deleuze and Guattari make the, the distinction and say, in a way, you know, in a, 
in a way that's sort of quite succinct, that the choice is being tra between transcendence and chaos, where transcendence involves relations to something that is external and pre-existing, um, you know, relations of representation, um, and chaos, which is relations in the imminent world of relations becoming movement, change, time. So this distinction between a relation to and a relation in is use useful to think through interior designing as a difference between a practice that works with and assert asserts relations as existing between things as relations to and one situated in the midst of relations as relations in where interior and interiority are produced in and productions of the outside. Relations in are different in kind from relations to. Um, basically relations to become a process of mediation um, of people to space. So interior designing um, becomes a practice that poses a problematic of an active synthesis as a production of the outside and moves from presuming and assuming practice as one of mediation between things. It moves to practicing in a zone of indeterminacy. So the idea of the opposite, uh, the idea of the inside is an operation of the outside, to quote Deleuze, or the outside interior, to quote Deleuze and Guattari. And to quote Deleuze again, the ultimate folding of the line, the outside, to produce an expectant interiority. These all invoke a different relation with interior as a production of an outside, understood as force, chaos, as a plane of imminence. So spatial experience is one where it's no longer subjectivity producing sense data, where the subject is centred as the producer of experience, but rather experience produces the subject, it's distinct, where experience produces the subject. So we are effects rather than causes, writes Deleuze. The experiential world is folded, the fold being the inside of the outside. Um, and just to conclude, uh, with a quote from Deleuze, we do not contemplate ourselves, but we exist only in contemplating. And I guess I pick up on this because of my interest in um, exhibitions. That is to say, in contracting that from which we come, we are always acting on by virtue of what we can contemplate, even though we are narcissus in relation to the pleasure we take from it. To contemplate is to draw something from. We must first contemplate something else, the water or Diana or the woods, in order to be filled with an image of ourselves. So this invites practice and in interior designing as experimentation engaged in techniques of interiorization, which pause and interrupt the chromatic circle of Narcissus that fixes and holds him, that captures, even if momentarily, the fleeting, fugacious outside folded in Nacteon, where he catches a glimpse of his metamorphosis in a lake. Deleuze's ideas of sensation, contraction, and contemplation make apparent regimes of representation and recognition as secondary, and in doing so open an opportunity, a pause in the middle for exper experience and experiment, a relation in, outside in, making relations. So for the International Federation of Interior Architects and Designers, if for the interior designer practicing with Deleuze, we might say instead, and quote from Deleuze, to think about the desert as the experimentation on oneself is our only identity, a single chance for all the combinations which inhabit us. And so, I, you know, it's just very nice then to have Ronald Bogue's um, example of the place where you go to listen as being perhaps one of those experiments in a sense, sense with this outside interior, I think, capturing that. And also what you mentioned about the three ecologies at the end of your talk, so I think this. There's a lot of things that have already surfaced. So thank you. Thanks. Thank you.